Welcome guys to DS Tech. Today we're going to be talking about one of the previous videos that I just recently made which was about my old PC. That PC is something that I made like back in 2015 but I still keep it and it's actually somewhere in the background over there. Uh, but anyways, let's take a look at the parts and why I made that PC back in the day. Um, if you guys haven't watched that video about my old PC, it's actually a time lapse on how I rebuilt it, how I added some extra stuff, cleaned it up. It's actually pretty fun. So if you haven't watched it yet, I'll put a link somewhere here so you could go watch it after this video, of course. Anyways, let's continue. One of the reasons why I made that PC like in 2015 was because I actually needed it. I mean, what other reason is there for us to build the PC if we don't need it, right? unless you just build them for fun. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, um, I built this PC when I was in university. I was pretty tired of just having one laptop. I had my Mac exclusively pretty much for university stuff like coding and anything related to software engineer that I was doing back then. But either way, I wanted to do some gaming just to entertain myself and some extra things that I wanted to look for. But anyways, I ended up wanting to build a computer. I myself didn't even know what to build, like how to start building a computer or anything related to that. But I had a friend that he told me that he could help me with like some parts and whatever my budget was, he would choose the parts for me or at least help me guide on whatever it was most important for me to get back then. Anyway, so let's look at the parts and let's go more into it on why I actually got them or why it was my stupid decision to get them. The first part that we'll take a look at is the Intel Core processor i7-4790K. A beast of a processor back in the day. Um, back in the day, like 2015. Um, it was a 22 nanometer CPU with four cores and eight threads, a four gigahertz. So very beast of a CPU. I didn't need this for sure, especially for the price that it was offered. I think it was like between 200 or 300 or maybe a little bit more than 300. So I spent most of my budget there because I remember my budget was like between 600 and 1000, depending on like what I was going to get. But I don't think I needed to get such a strong CPU back then. Somehow my friend told me, you know, CPU, if you want more CPU, then you do better with like some uh, video editing. And he was right, but I didn't think I would. I mean, there's definitely other options that I could have gotten, um, especially back then. I wasn't really like into like CPUs or anything, or I didn't even know which one was better. So back then I didn't even know why there was different CPUs and what was the difference between the CPUs and why was one better than the other one. So pretty much I was just like, okay, if my friend tells me to get this, I'll get it. If it's better, sure, I'll get it. But that was pretty much it. But this one was a beast of a CPU, definitely didn't need this much, much power or much performance back then. Either way, I got it. Next thing that was one of the most important things that I feel like I should have prioritized back then should have been the GPU because the GPU is something that I'm going to use a lot. Yeah, this PC was for gaming as well as some extra things that I wanted to do with like uh, Nvidia coding. So I needed this to be much better. I don't know why I went with the 960. I could have gone with something much better with like a 970. But anyways, I went with the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 960 four gigabytes. This thing was like 200 bucks, maybe a little bit cheaper before. Not exactly sure, but I think I definitely gave it a run for its money. When I was in university, I definitely didn't care about like the performance of a game, if it looked good or if it looked bad. I didn't even know like the rates for the monitors, like 144 hertz refresh rates or one millisecond response time 
or like okay this if I get this video card can I get like uh, what what pixels can I get like I mean if I get this if I if I got this graphics card I was I was actually thinking okay I can play games I didn't even know what was the difference between 960 or 970 or like 980 and back then it was also like 980 Ti I'm pretty sure and then like Titan Nexus there was this whole variety of GPUs that went like insane price back then and you could even put like twos but I wasn't even aware of all these things I was just like okay if I got this then I can pretty sure play any other game that I could get for my PC so that should be good enough and for a while in a very long while this was enough um, but yeah I think I should have done much better could have gotten a 970 maybe a less powerful G uh, CPU and I would still be somewhat in budget for whatever else I might need regardless both of those parts were amazing not gonna complain they never failed me they never broke down or never had any problems with it let's continue the next part was actually the motherboard I remember when I was asked like um, what motherboard I wanted to get I just wanted to get something that was working like okay if my CPU needs a motherboard doesn't matter which motherboard I get or what about the GPU doesn't matter what motherboard I get and back then I didn't even know all the differences between motherboard I didn't even know anything about anything I was just like what motherboard should I get I asked my friend that and she's like okay maybe you should go for something cheap and okay then I got this and that's pretty much my story about every single part in here I was clueless about everything but most importantly is the part that comes next which is did I build it myself and I didn't build it myself I saw my friend do it because I was afraid if I was gonna break something I mean I already spent like a very big amount of money on this thing and yeah but then curiosity like told me to keep like digging in into this type of hobby about computers and I kept watching more videos and more and then I got more into it and of course I got to like know like more stuff related to this but anyways that's out of the subject let's keep going into why I chose this motherboard very good motherboard by the way um, I like that it was blue yeah back then motherboards had colors so okay if you were going with a blue type of theme then you will choose this type of motherboard so maybe you could put some custom cables that are blue or you could like customize it yourself so the motherboard looks nice with your setup and also blue was my favorite color another thing and most importantly I think the reason why I got this motherboard is because it was super cheap I feel like the price for this motherboard back then it was like between 70 and 100 dollars um, definitely within my budget for all my PC related things so super worth it I was like okay I'm gonna be able to play games it's gonna be everything is gonna be running good as long as we have some type of decent motherboard and this was it so for the next thing I also needed a power supply a power supply was something that I was like what's that like do I need it and what is it for and I didn't know that PCs needed some type of like system so they could generate power and then you know I could give energy to everything else but yeah we did have to use something like that and of course now I know why we need all these things um, but yeah back then I was so clueless about everything uh, anyways I ended up getting something like very cheap that was good enough so I could run every single part that I was buying um, yeah the I chose like some EVGA uh, power supply 500 watts was pretty much enough for all the system things that I was running in there Pretty cheap. I think it was like around 50 bucks Anyways, the next thing was actually I think around the same price probably back then I ended up getting like uh, Eight was it 
I think it was 8 gigabytes of like DDR3 uh, at 1600 MHz RAM. So yeah, I didn't even care if it looked good or anything. As long as it was under my budget, I was getting it. <laughs> I just need, okay, you just need some RAM. Okay, cool, just get that RAM. Back then, I feel like I was just buying parts didn't even matter if it was, it was making sense as long as it was part of my budget. If it fit in, cool, let's just put it in. Also, just a note, I was buying these parts not online. I went to um, this store close by uh, my university. For those of you that don't know, I went to UCI. So that store was called Micro Center. I went there and yeah they were having everything there but the people who helped me i wish they would have told me bro you know like if you're gonna choose these parts yeah like there are better options <laughs> so then i think i would have been able to be happier with this build that i made back then <laughs> but as of now i'm just looking to myself and i'm like ah none of this makes sense why would i get such a system why would I get a CPU so beast with this type of RAM? It doesn't even make sense. It doesn't even make sense at all. But anyways, I ended up doing that and it is what it is. We got it. Super cheap either way. Was able to run most of my games, most of the programs. It was pretty smooth, not gonna lie. But it's not like I used the computer for something like super heavy, like 4k video editing or things like that i mean i don't even think i could do that but anyways let's continue other thing i just ended up getting it's like a 250 or 240 whatever it is uh, ssd that's the only thing that i got for the system i felt like my budget didn't allow me to get a much better um, storage for this but 250 seemed pretty good to me i was not going to be having many things in there probably some games and then games are not usually that heavy back then of course we can't even compare to now i mean now it's just crazy you could have your os occupying like some part of your ssd and then call of duty comes out with a new patch that's probably bigger than anything else that you have in um, the whole system lastly I want to talk about this so this is actually very interesting this guy at micro center he told me you know we have this case it's very nice has like a, a clear side panel has like some lights inside it might, it's gonna look cool you know and it's also on sale so this thing was like 60 bucks when it came out and I think they were selling it for like 40 very very nice uh, case back then um, yeah of, thankfully my friend helped me build this the cable management was horrible horrible I mean let's just take a look at it on the back there's not much room at all to do any cable management in here um, I'm pretty sure there's like a better picture give me a second okay here it is the cable management, look, there's no room. <laughs> there's literally no room in here to do anything, uh, anything pretty with cable management. But anyways, I ended up getting this case, super affordable case. Not the best case, of course. It, um, I don't know if it came with one or two fans. Of course, I didn't stay. I mean, I didn't keep this um, case for that long but it was a very worth uh worth it case for 40 dollars i don't think i could find anything better than this back then a couple years later i actually upgraded to a better case which is the one that i made the video about on my last video so this is the corsair also 460x series rgb and when this case came out, I actually loved it. 
I loved it at first sight. I was like, I want that case. It looks so cool from the front. It has like RGB fans. I love the RGB fans that you could see them and you see them so clearly. I was like into that thing. And you could change the colors and everything. And on the side, it had like a complete clear side panel. I was like, okay, I need this and I need it now. And when I got this, I was so happy. I ended up like just disassembling all my the parts from my old PC and then putting them in here. Even though I didn't have anything to show inside because everything was horrible. Like old motherboard, like the GPU was not that good looking. Uh, I still love this case. I was like, from the outside, at least my PC is clean. <laughs> but yeah, not a bad case, not bad parts. Definitely could have done much better for this build. Um, at the end, this build ended up costing me like around 800. Um, I ended up paying like a thousand overall because back then I didn't have like any keyboard or mouse or monitors or anything like that. This case cost me what it says right here, $150. Um, I actually received it as a present and yeah, I'm very happy with it even until now. The, I'll probably make a video about this case and why I actually loved it so much. Okay, so lastly, every single piece that I got for this PC, it turned out to be pretty good. Of course, it didn't give me the best FPS or it didn't give me the best uh, quality for all the games that I wanted to get, but it was an amazing PC. Um, it looked pretty because of the new case also and I really appreciate like this build because it taught me so much because of this build I actually started learning much more about computer building and every single part for the PCs and why are they necessary and why are there much better PCs than other and why are they so expensive anyways I hope you guys like this video and you guys enjoy the reasons why I actually got this PC in 2015. It was definitely worthwhile while I had it. Of course, I actually upgraded to a new one and I'll be sharing that soon. But either way, if you guys loved this video or liked it, make sure to give a like down below and subscribe if you haven't done that already for more content like this. And yeah, I'll see you next one. Peace.